symmetry affects chirality. That is to say, if a molecule has a high degree of symmetry despite having multiple chirality centers, the molecule itself may not be chiral. The two kinds of symmetry that typically eliminate chirality are a mirror plane or an inversion point. So if you have a molecule that has multiple chirality centers but is highly symmetric and therefore not chiral, the molecule is meso. Let's have a look at some examples of a mirror plane. This molecule clearly has a mirror plane, which is in the horizontal here. If you rotate through that plane, you'll get a hydroxyl group here on a wedge and a hydroxyl group here on a wedge. So we take this molecule and we reflect it through this mirror plane, and this is what we see, indistinguishable from the original. Now, if we do that with this molecule, we'll see it's enantiomer. Right, so here's the enantiomer. And so what that means is this molecule is meso. It's identical to its mirror image, whereas this molecule is not. This molecule is chiral. What about this molecule? Does it have a mirror plane? Well, if we reflect it through this plane, we see something that looks pretty different, right? Now, our topmost carbon doesn't have any substituents. And here, where we should have a hydroxyl on a wedge, we've got one on a dash. Here, where our initial one has a hydroxyl on a dash, we have one on a wedge. And down here, we have a hydroxyl where there isn't one in the initial. But, if we then take this and rotate it 60 degrees counterclockwise in the horizontal plane, so, like this, what do you think we'll see? Well, that means I need to take this hydroxyl group that was on the bottommost carbon and put it here on a dash. The one that was on a wedge here goes on a wedge here. And this one that was on a dash goes on a dash on the topmost carbon over here. And you're probably saying to yourself, oh my gosh, it's the same. But I didn't see the mirror plane. Well, you were looking in the wrong place. The mirror plane was there all along, just not where you had seen it before. There it is. So this molecule is, in fact, meso. What about this molecule? Clearly, there's no mirror plane as drawn. But remember, free rotation is allowed around any single bond. That means that I can rotate the carbon on the right 180 degrees. So. That means that instead of going flat up, this methyl group will be going flat and straight down. And this hydroxyl group, instead of coming down and towards me, or sorry, down and away from me, it'll be coming up and towards me. So my new image of the molecule will look like this. There's my methyl group going straight down. Here's my hydroxyl group coming up and towards me. Here's my initial hydroxyl group, and holy cow, now you can see the mirror plane. Believe it or not, this molecule is meso.
So I've drawn you some more molecules here for an exercise. Decide which of these are meso. Pause and circle the ones that are meso and then resume to see the answers. So, this molecule you can see has got a mirror plane without doing any rotations. So this one is definitely meso. If we do a 180 degree rotation here, then we get this. Or rather, we get this. And you can see that there is no mirror plane there. So this is not meso. And what about this one? To see whether or not it's meso, we're going to have to do 180 degree rotation. And we're going to rotate around this bond. So. That's going to take this carbon straight up and where the hydroxyl group was on a wedge before, it's going to be on a dash, right? So this and this and this and this and this are unaffected. But now, instead of zagging, I'm going to zig and go straight up. And then we're like that. And sure enough, you can see the mirror plane. So this molecule is meso. So we've looked at some mirror planes. Now let's look at inversion symmetry. This is much harder to see. So this molecule has what we call inversion symmetry. It's hard to see. Let's look at the mirror image of the molecule. It's chiral if it's not superimposable on its mirror image, right? And those really don't look superimposable to me. Although, what if we took a spatula and we flipped it over from the side? So I take my trusty and cleverly drawn pancake flipper and I stick it under this molecule and I flip it 180 degrees in the horizontal plane or rather, flip it vertical. That means this nitrogen, which is in the top right corner, is now in the bottom right corner. This nitrogen that was in the bottom left corner is now in the top left corner. Let's draw those in. So, I've got those hydrogens, and then I've got a carbonyl here, and a carbonyl here. Now, what about the methyl groups? This methyl group that was going away from us on top of the molecule is now going to be coming towards us on the bottom. And this methyl group that was coming towards us on the bottom is now going to be going away from us on the top. And now you can see, my friends, that they are superimposable. So this molecule does not have a mirror plane, but what it does have is an inversion point. An inversion point is at the center of a molecule, and you take every point on one side and flip it through that inversion point. So here I've got a methyl group going up, I reflect through, now it's a methyl group going down on the opposite side of the molecule.
Having inversion symmetry makes a molecule meso.